Hello, I'm John Nightingale, a director at JCT and the symposium host. Now the 25th JCT Traffic Signal Symposium was an online event this year and I'm delighted to bring you a recording of one of the presentations. Now these recordings would not have been possible without the support of a select group of our event partners. So our thanks go to the Institute of Highway Engineers, ITS UK, keepadistance.co.uk, Siemens Mobility, TWM, and of course, our media partner, Highways News. Please check out their short videos, which will tell you about some of the products and services that they can provide. Now, I hope you enjoy this presentation, and we would love to see you in person for our 25th anniversary event in Nottingham Trent University in September 2021. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Thank you, John, and welcome to this presentation of the State of the Connected Nation and the work of the Transport Technology Forum by myself, Darren Capes. I'm ITS Policy Lead at the Department for Transport and Andy Graham of White Willow Consulting, who, uh, who consults for me and helps me with the Transport Technology Forum. So many of you may have heard of the Transport Technology Forum. It's been around for quite a few years now. It's, it started off as an industry-led forum uh, with, with the aims of, of bringing local authorities, uh, the private sector, the supply chain, academia, consultants, and, and any, anybody else interested in, in intelligent transport technology together in a single space where, where we, could, we could talk openly and, and discuss the issues and challenges around, around implementing ITS and, and implementing advanced technology in, in, roads, uh, in roads and highways. More recently, the TTF has been funded by the Department for Transport. We've been sponsoring it now for, for about, about two years. And, and really the work of the TTF now is to, is to act as a tool by which the department can support the, the, the development and use of technology in the road transport sector. And it exists to allow us to have an open space where we can all come together and speak and talk about issues and challenges. It, it exists as a space where we can, we can learn from each other, where we can share experience and, and, and uh, uh, learn, learn from the projects that the, the, the DFT is funding and it also exists as a space where, where we can, as a DFT can speak to the industry and find out what, what we need to do, what work needs to be done, what, 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 uh, what projects need to be run, where the barriers are to implementation that maybe we can, we can help with and that's really the purpose of the forum. More recently the forum has been heavily involved in the, in the COVID response. Uh, we've been very heavily involved in collecting data for for the government's response to COVID, we've been we've been help, heavily involved in, in building an understanding of what's happening in cities, and this has been a, a very very powerful piece of work in terms of growing the re recognition of TTF widely, growing it in the department, and getting people to understand the benefits of of, of the TTF. So we've been working on the COVID data response, and, and some of you may have seen the the, the weekly digest that we started producing, the graphs that and Andy's going to talk about in a few a few moments, which which are drawn from, from a wide range of, of local authorities. And I really need to start, start by saying thank you to all the local authorities that have participated in this. And this has done something unique. We've taken data from many sources, from many cities, from the UTC systems, from existing traffic counting systems, from, from cycle counting systems, from a whole range of, of, of sources. And, and using, uh, using the skills that, that Arup possess as, as, uh, as delivers of the Transport Technology Forum for DFT, We've, we've collated these into a, into a common data set. This has allowed us to, to augment the, the data that the DFT already has for trunk roads and interurban routes and give, give a unique insight into traffic in cities that we've never had before. And this, is, this has proved immensely important for supporting the DFT in, in the COVID response and in working with the Cabinet Office in Number 10 to, to understand the government's response. And it's also shown the, the value of data and it's shown the value and the, and the capabilities of data. And it's shown how much data is in local authorities that, that maybe up to now hasn't been used for, for everything it could be used for. And, and that, that's understandable. People buy systems, they buy data, they use the data to drive the systems. We don't necessarily think about what else we could do with that data. And this has really been a point in, in which we've, we've been able to do that. So recently we've been searching for the morning peak, we've been searching for the AM peak. This is one of the things that we've noticed of, of late with the COVID, uh, with the, the response to COVID and, and what's happened in lockdown is that the morning peak has pretty much disappeared. And the data that we, we've been able to produce has, has been to show that in great detail. And now as schools go back, we're starting to see it return again. But we have a really unique insight now into cities and, and into what's happening in our towns 
and understanding of, of, of things like that, things that we never really expected to happen, like the disappearance of the morning peak and its slow reemergence. These are all things that we've been able to prove from the data that we've, we've started to uh, collate recently that we've never really been understand before. We're now working with, with ITS UK and with colleagues in, in, uh, in Elkrig, the local council's road innovation group, to develop a set of webinars. And this is about COVID, but not, not directly about COVID. There's an awful lot of people talking about COVID at the moment, but this is about what we're learning as an industry from the unique challenges we've faced and how that can help us shape the future, how, how that can help us think particularly around data, how that can help us think about the things that we've learned with data recently, the things that we've had to do very quickly as part of the COVID response. There's some very useful learnings in there, the very useful things that we found that we, we, we want to maintain and want to carry on, uh, carry on uh, implementing. So the webinars are about us understanding, understanding the value of data, understanding the value of data in decision making, in, in not only strategic but tactical decision making, the value of data augmented into bigger data sets, the types of things that, that we, we, we think we, we will be important. And, and many of you will have heard the government talking about build back better, this idea that actually as we build out of COVID, we want to, we want to make sure that we lock in some of the good uh, outcomes we've seen from the recent uh, COVID response. This is part of that, ensure that local authorities are able to build back better in terms of the way that we use data. This feeds into the technical working groups that, that, uh, that, that the TTF manages. Now we have four technical working groups, we have one that looks at asset management, and this builds on the projects that we've funded over the, over the years to do with using data and technology for asset management. We have a group that looks at smart parking. This is, this is, this is thinking about things like the, the open parking standards, the, the aligned parking data standards, and what future parking will look like. We have a group that looks at, looks at uh, opening data and looks at some of the opportunities that are coming around in vehicle messaging uh, and some of the other systems that we're seeing as, 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 as collecting vehicle data becomes more prevalent. But the group I, group I want to focus on for, for the purpose of this, this presentation is Spatula. Spatula is, is, is the group which is now driving forward uh, green, light, uh, green light advice in the UK. So as we start to see Glosser and, and the related technologies coming to the fore, as we start to see people, uh, people in the supply chain selling Glosser, as we see authorities thinking about buying Glosser, as we as government think about wide scale Glosser trials and, 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 and as, as we start to get the public understanding, the abilities of connected vehicles to speak to, speak to traffic signals and to, and to have green light advice and green light, uh, green light warnings in vehicles, Glosser is the group that's starting to bring all that together. And, and, and the Glosser group, which runs under the auspice of TTF, is bringing together pro, uh, projects such as the, the work that's going on in York, the Kenton Vehicle Corridor work from Newcastle, the work in connection with the construction of the Hinkley Point power station in Somerset, the, the suppliers such as, such as uh, uh, Dinik and, and Siemens and others who are starting to bring Glosser products to the market. This brings them all together in a single place. We have meetings where we start, we're starting now to discuss what's happening, what the opportunities are, and again, doing exactly what the TTF is meant to do, which is all about sharing learning and sharing understanding and starting to build a common, common picture so we can move forward on a larger scale. And if, if government is able to fund Glosser trials or Glosser rollout on a larger scale in the future, it means that the industry and the local authorities and the supply chain are likely to be more ready for that as it comes and more ready to respond to that and deliver and meet that challenge. So going back to the, the COVID data response, uh, I want to pass over to Andy now, who, who's just going to take you through some of the data we've collected and some of the interesting and unique things we've found from the, from the graphs that we've been compiling on a weekly basis since, since the middle of March. Andy. Okay, thanks very much, Darren. Um, this is the first graph that uh, our friends at Arup and myself have produced. Uh, the, the, it's really showing the change from the baseline in, in average daily traffic. Uh, and what that shows for the 107 districts across the country that we've got, which are, as Darren said, are urban and rural roads, is that we're on average at around 90% now. Now, this is being recorded uh, a few days before you will see it. So that could change in terms of weather, uh, but also some of the um, new COVID-19 restrictions. But you see, basically, our, our, our daily traffic is not back where it was for most towns and cities now there are exceptions to that London in the urban area has more traffic than it did have and clearly the urban roads highways England and also in terms of particular types of vehicles such as HGVs and also cycles we've seen quite a large growth in traffic but as Darren said one of the really interesting things is what's happened to the the morning peak so the slightly messy graph here but if you imagine that blue is what it was in kind of February and purple is how low it got in March and April. We are now 
uh, as the blue arrow shows, we're now on that kind of rusty orangey uh, graph in the morning peak. And this is again an average of the 100 or so local authorities. And you can see that we're really not yet back at the, the morning peak, um, but we are kind of getting there for the PM peak. Um, and we've also blended in uh, cycling data in this as well to see how much uh, vehicles drivers have been replaced by cycling. So, so it's really interesting and one of the things that we're doing literally on a week by week basis is taking the data and seeing has the morning peak come back in the same shape that we had previously because telling a load of traffic signal engineers how to suck eggs you kind of spend a lot of time designing for that morning peak and if the shape of that morning peak and the size of that morning peak changes then that's something we really could be useful to know about. Um, the other thing that's very interesting is that during lockdown every day was more or less the same so we had an average across all seven days that really showed no peak at all apart from a kind of popping out for a cup of tea peak whereas now clearly we're getting a, a morning peak and particularly so as the schools come back so it's a case of watch this space but the general feeling at the moment from most of the people we've spoken to is that uh, the traffic in the morning peak hasn't quite got back there and once that settles down with schools and some of the COVID-19 type restrictions we might be able to uh, make something out of that in terms of the impact on, on traffic control. Um, the other thing that Darren spoke about was the work that the um, uh, TTF has done looking at the state of the connected nation. So there's a report. Um, if you recall at the last JCT in Nottingham, I spoke about the Ibarakan project and the idea of using floating vehicle data to set signals. Um, that project is now complete. We've been looking at more of that. Darren mentioned uh, green light optimum speed advisory. There's four or five projects now kicking off with that. The spatula working group. The thing that we really got out of doing this report was it was not just about connecting technology and all the various acronyms and tech, but it's actually about people and organizations working together. And that's one of the, the key things about these working groups that have been set up. Um, one of the useful things about that report was that people actually read it and the Times featured it and gave a very good positive story about how Glossa can be one tool that could help out in cities, particularly the missions. Uh, perhaps a little bit uh, not so strong on some of the uh, legacy and, and infrastructure implications on the safety side, but um, there's no such thing as bad publicity, so we we're pleased to get that. And I'll now pass over to Darren and he'll talk about the um, breadth and depth of the projects that DFT have, have funded and some of the projects that are about to come over. So thanks very much. Thank you, Andy. Thanks. So just going back in time a little bit, this, this is a, a, a map and some text which, which talks about four years of, of, of CITS projects that we funded. And, and this, this has been very much the, 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 the kind of engine behind the, the TTF recently, that the, the, the learning that we've got from these projects, the opportunity to share this learning and to, and to build experience and to use these projects as a way of building out. Because, because, because what we want to see, what ministers want, what the department wants is, is to start to see connected technologies become used on a more wide scale and start to see this technology embed itself in business as usual and, and move from beyond the pilot stage in, into actual use. And I think fundamentally that's what the public wants. And increasingly as we see connected, connected technologies available on vehicles, as we see more and more advanced technologies in cars and people expect that, that technology to work, then they will expect the highway to, to work as well. They will expect the infrastructure to support that technology. So we have a strong challenge here to, 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 to move from, from the laboratory to, to actual real use. And the, project, the projects that we funded have been very much around doing that. And the projects we funded have been across five different themes. We've, we've funded projects around, uh, around single phase and timing, around, around, around Glossa and, and, and those types of technologies and, and technologies around uh, vehicles and signals speaking to each other. We've funded projects around asset management. And th this is, this is a, an area of, of projects that are very uh, important to authorities, maybe less visible to the public, but this is about using technologies such as uh, video analytics uh, and, and other potential data streams to help local authorities inspect the highway, do, do cost visual inspections, uh, uh, help technology to work as part of a risk-based ass uh, assessment program and, and, and intervention program for highway maintenance and potentially do highway maintenance a lot more effectively and, and, and show a real business case. And the asset management group is very interesting because that, that's one where there is a clear financial reason for using technology. There's a clear way of doing the job better with technology. 
and, and, and in, in some ways the the trials have done have been about about trying to identify that trying to work out what that what that value is and how you how you how you get to it because that that then kind of by itself seal sells the technology we've done work around smarter parking the, the, the department has funded the development of a standard called apds the the aligned parking data standards which is about being able to to finally get to this 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 uh, goal of, of one touch or even no touch parking and and thinking about that in, in terms of oyster it's about trying to make a parking experience the same as an oyster experience where you basically you tap in and tap out or you do the parking equivalent which is probably park and then leave without without interacting with any kind of machine any kind of parking uh ticket machine or anything like that it all happens seamlessly and we're building the standards and starting to run the trials that help us with that and of course that's been important for a number of years. That, that's where we think parking needs to go. That's where the industry think it needs to go. COVID has made that even more important because the ability to park without having to get out and queue for a parking ticket or touch a machine, touch a surface. These are the kind of things that, these are the challenges that COVID is, is presenting us with. So these types of standards are very important. And ultimately this will allow for seamless parking, uh, for parking services to be integrated into mobile phones and vehicles. These are the types of trials that we have run through the through the uh, smarter parking group. Connected data and technologies has been a, a group that we has allowed us a group of projects that has allowed us to trial things like in vehicle messaging, the ability to to gather data to to undertake better tactical uh, urban traffic control to understand what's happening on the network more quickly, to bring in new data sources to, into control rooms, to allow operators to see incidents and accidents more quickly to to react more quickly. These are projects that, that ultimately could inform the way that, that, that urban traffic control has developed as, develops as more technology, as more data, as more uh, modeling and processing power becomes available. These, tech, these projects inform what we maybe should be using that for. And more recently, we've, we've, we've focused on some projects uh, looking at opening local authority data, looking at what, could, what would happen, what, what, what could the market develop, what could, what could we do more, uh, more widely and better if local authority data was more open. I think there's a few to, few people to, to mention there. Uh, Hull, for example, Hull City Council have been opening uh, scoop loop data. They, they've built a database of scoop loop data, which now allows them to use that for all types of uh, planning and decision making. The data that would traditionally be be sat in a silo has now been now been opened up, and that's the type of project that we're really looking at to 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 do in in that in that space. So some headlines. There's some. I apologise for the size of the text, but there's some interesting headlines there. On the A45 in Birmingham, we've reduced stops at traffic signals by around 14%, reducing emissions, uh, not just from tailpipes, but from vehicle stop start by using a very a simple, very, uh, very effective uh, glosser tool. We, we've reduced delay in, in Warrington for road users in York by up to 30% by improving traffic signal settings from new data sources. Again, this idea about bringing new data sources in. We're looking at ways of, imp of uh, mitigating construction traffic to Hinkley Point, as we mentioned earlier, using glosser, using Glosser to try and keep vehicles moving, keep HTVs moving on, on, on what is fundamentally a road network that isn't really suitable for very high levels of construction traffic, but because of the location of the, of the construction site has to be made so. We're looking at using vehicle data better. We, we're looking at uh, reducing uh, road maintenance costs, as I say, that's working in North Yorkshire, Westminster, Buckinghamshire, using new data sources to reduce the effort of, of inspecting the highway and, and understanding when uh, maintenance interventions are required. This reduces maintenance costs by potentially 5%, which is a, a, large, a large amount of money. As you can see, there's some others there. So parking in Harrogate, Coventry, Cardiff, Milton Keynes, uh, apps that work, on, work using uh, devices such as uh, apps, dongles and dash cams, Using the types of technology, the types of uh, commodity that we're all starting to see in cars now, using that type of technology, that type of availability to do new things, to work out new opportunities. And these are the types of things that, that these projects are doing. The purpose of the Tr Transport Technology Forum and the, the, the groups that we talked about, we talked about the spatula group in particular. The purpose of the groups, groups is to suck up this knowledge, suck up this learning and disseminate it. And I would encourage anybody with an interest in anything that I've mentioned, any of the areas I've talked about there, to get in touch and, and, and play a part in, the, in, in those groups, because this is a great way to understand what other people have been doing, what the supply chain is doing, and what the opportunities are for using these types of technologies in the future. So as, as Andy mentioned a, a few slides ago, we've recently produced the uh, State of the Connected Nation report, and that, that builds on the, on the CITS pilot projects we, we looked at in the last slide, and tells the story of, of those projects. The next report that we intend to produce from the 
uh, Transport Technology Forum is a scuba report. Now, scuba is a word that we, we've invented, and it, it's short for scoot and mover. And this is because this report looks at looks at adaptive control in the UK, which of course is primarily scoot and mover. And the report is based on some work that we started in 2018, canvassing authorities and, and running some uh, questionnaires from which we got a very wide response, asking questions about, about how people were using this technology, how, how effective it was, what, what the state of repair was, how, how effectively people were able to maintain it and keep it running, how many, how many uh, sites were working properly and how many in fault, how many were properly uh, validated and so on and so forth. And this work allowed us to, allowed us to compile a report, which, which we would have published earlier in this year if it wasn't for COVID, but we're now, we're now finishing and, and preparing to work. And this, this piece of work is, is, is in a way a challenge to the, to the department. This is, a, this is saying we need to fix what we have now before we start thinking about new technologies. Before we move into the future and start thinking about connected vehicles and autonomy, it's important that we fix what we have. And, and, and what we've seen from the work that we've done with, with, with uh, the Spatula Group is that traffic signals will play a key role in, in how connected vehicles and infrastructure work together over the coming years. So, so it's important that we get that right. The Scuva report starts to, starts to allow us to understand that, allow us to understand the challenges and the, and, and the issues that we face in ensuring that we maintain what we have now better and more reliably and, and get it working. And more importantly, implement adaptive control where it isn't at the moment and start to get the, the UK traffic signal state as a whole up to a common standard of of maintenance and repair but also of functionality so what are the next steps for the transport technology forum we're currently doing some sbri projects we're currently uh, the department is currently running three projects using the small business research and innovation fund looking at various aspects of of uh, traffic control that those will those will be reporting uh, next year and, and again as with the projects they've run already they, they will be something that, that we use as learning and experience in the ttf the connected vehicle data strategy is also coming soon and this is a piece of work that's been undertaken to, to to understand what the department's strategy for connected vehicle data should be how do we make the most of what we have how do we ensure that, that signals gloucester asset management public transport vulnerable road users and smart parking those technologies we've talked about up to now how do we ensure that we, we must maximize the benefits of those and, and, and target spending correctly to promote those across the uk and we're, we're trying to learn the lessons from, from what's happened in the Netherlands, the Talking Traffic Project in the Netherlands, which is now coming to fruition and appears to be very successful. What lessons can that teach us about, about uh, implementing connected vehicle data in the UK? We're working on with Zenzik on the infrastructure roadmap, and this is about where we go from here. This is working with Zenzik, who are producing the, the UK's national roadmap for, for investment in technology from now into quite a long way into the future to, to full autonomy. We're concentrating on, on the infrastructure element of that. What do we as local public bodies and public authorities need to invest in, in terms of infrastructure to allow that future of increasingly connected, increasingly autonomous vehicles to become a reality? We're working on skills. We're doing some work with the IET at the moment about developing skills in this sector. We're also thinking about, about work uh, and, and, and some work that local authorities, some local authorities are doing about, about bringing new entrants into the sector, thinking about skill leavers, thinking about people training into the sector because we recognize that skills is a real issue here and it's not just an issue that we potentially don't have enough engineers in the sector at the moment it's also an issue that the skills that we may need in the future are not the ones that, that highway engineers traditionally possess so there's some real issues there that we're working on as i said earlier we have an alliance with the local council's road innovation group which is allowing us access into a wider range of local authority views and a wider range of local authority personnel to, to, to kind of break out the traditional people, traditional group of people that we've, we've, we've engaged with with TTF. That's a very healthy thing. That gives us a much wider perspective. And we're also working on the comprehensive spending review. Now, as, as some of you may know, that's a process that's ongoing at the moment ahead of a potential budget announcement in the, in the autumn. We're doing some work on, on what we need to invest in, what, what we need to pitch to Treasury in terms of funding to allow us to deliver things such as talking traffic, such as better signal maintenance, such as better, such as signal upgrades and, and enhancements. So that's where we're going, but that's the future. There's a lot of, lot of work for the TTF to be doing. I would ask you all, if you, uh, if, if you want to, please go to the TTF website, uh, Google Transport Technology Forum, and you'll find it. That has many of the reports on it that we've talked about, and, that will, and more reports will be on there as we, as we publish them. So please, please engage with the TTF, please come to the meetings, please download and read the reports. Uh, and I would like to thank you. I'd like to thank you for this opportunity to speak to you today.